Hi everybody, this is Gregor for Personas and today we want to look at transforming tracks in Studio One, which is a very powerful feature that you might know from other DAWs as flattening or freezing. Essentially what this does is just render down your real-time audio or instrument tracks so that you can save on processing that you might need for other powerful plugins. But you still have full access to all the embedded MIDI and automation data, you can restore all of the insert effects if you have rendered them down and much more. Let's check it out. So as I just mentioned, you can use Transform both on audio tracks as well as instrument tracks and you can even apply it to your external instruments, which is an absolutely unique feature about Studio One. So let's check it out with an audio track first. As you can see, I have a bit crusher applied to this percussion track here and you can see, um, yeah, I was just basically doing a bypass automation just as an example so you can see that really all the automation data is being rendered and restored as well, okay? So if you want to transform this track into like rendered audio that you can use just like rendered audio, but it doesn't need all that real time processing power because the plugins are rendered in, you can just right click that audio track and choose transform to rendered audio. Now you're presented with two choices for audio tracks. There's a couple more for instrument tracks, but we're going to cover that in just a sec. And the first one is preserve real time state. So select this if you want to support retransformation to an audio track with the original insert effects and automation. If you're absolutely sure that you want to commit, you can leave this unticked. But in general, it's always a great idea to just leave that option active at all times. Um, why would you not want to go back at some point to a real time state if a customer, a collaborator, or your bandmate, or yourself requires it. And the option below that is auto tail. This is so that the tail of reverb and delay effects and so forth is considered even though the event has already ended. When this is not ticked, the render will only be as long as the actual event in your arrangement. So if you have a couple of reverbs and delays going on with a longer decay time, they would just be chopped off. So it's probably best to leave auto tail active to let Studio One calculate how much time is actually needed until all of that reverb and all the other effects that might be in play here are finished. And you can also specify the length here. It can be up to one minute actually, but in most cases, five seconds or 10 seconds should be absolutely fine. And then you hit OK. And now you can see how every event on that track has been rendered and yeah, I can clearly see already on the waveform that my volume automation has been rendered in as well. So because I had a bit crusher here, the first part should sound pretty clean. And the second one should be more distorted. Definitely worked. Cool. And if I want to go back from that, it's just the same procedure. You just right click here and then you transform back to real time audio. And as soon as I do that, you see the bit crusher is back and also all of the automations are being restored as well. It's essentially rendering without committing to anything. Now on instrument tracks, there's even more flexibility involved because there's a couple more variables at play here. For instance, you know, your output routings, your preset that's used by the instrument, all of these things have to be restored as well in this case, which is not relevant like that for audio tracks. So on this one, I have an automation here on the Xtrem. It's a very powerful plugin that I've already showed you last week. And if you haven't checked it out, definitely check out this video. You're going to find it at the end. Um, it's going to take you right to the video and um, yeah this is what it sounds like right now and it's just for a little bit more movement and side chaining and if I want to render down this track to save on processing but still have full access afterwards to all the plugins and automations it's the exact same procedure that we just looked at with the audio track you just right click the instrument track and you choose transform to audio track and now you get a couple more options on instrument tracks, as I mentioned before. For instance, you can render in the inserts. If you engage that, all of the automation is still available for real-time modulation or modification. So if you want to render this down, not fiddling with the plugins any longer, but you want to make changes to them at any point in the future, then just leave that box tick. That's, in my opinion, the best setting. Then there's the option to preserve an instrument track state. This is great if you want to retransform from the audio track back to the instrument track with your preset applied and so forth. This is fantastic for that, but you can also just leave that unticked if you want to process the instrument itself into rendered audio while still having full control over the plugins that are applied on it. Then you can choose to remove the instrument. The instrument is going to be disabled either way, of course. I mean, 
saving that processing power is the whole point of transformation. But if you don't tick remove instrument, then you're still gonna see it in the instrument rack in the console so that you know what instrument used to be in place. Personally, I don't need that. So I pretty much always leave this ticked. Then the auto tail does the exact same thing as I uh, explained before. Usually the max length of five to 10 seconds is uh, just fine. And then you can hit okay. Once that's done, you see that the media information is still embedded here, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you want to layer this uh, with another instrument, you don't have to first retransform this audio track to an instrument track to access the MIDI data. You can just drag and drop that directly to an instrument track, as I already mentioned in the intro. What's also really neat is that if you have an Impact XT, for instance, with several outputs, maybe I can show you this really quickly by going to a new song. Um, and adding one of our music loops, which you can also find if you go to files and sound sets. And uh, if you don't have that already as a tab, just go to files and then you find sound sets from here. Make sure that you have the Impact XT kits and sounds installed for some great sounding music loops. You can do that by clicking on Studio One, Studio One installation, and then instruments impact drum kits, and then installing that. And then you're gonna get these music loops you just drag that in and even though it sounds kind of like an audio loop, it's actually going to restore the instrument with all of the output routings, all of the insert effects that were applied at the time and much more. Okay, but let's say that I want to transform this Impact XT track down now, but there's several outputs, right? So they have dedicated control in the console over my clap, my cymbals, my percussions without actually having to also have eight tracks in my arrangement, which would be kind of kind of weird, right? I want to compose my drums as one instrument, but have dedicated control on the console. This is why we have no one-to-one -one relationship between tracks and channels in Studio One. The tracks and transform has to kind of consider this as well. And fortunately it does. So if you have a multi-instrument with multiple outputs selected here and you right click transform to audio track, you see a new option that we weren't seeing before, which is called render all channels. And when this is uh, engaged, all of the outputs that are used by this instrument are going to be rendered separately. Otherwise, it's really just the output that you have um, specified in the track inspector right here. So with this disengaged, I would really just export my kick right now or flatten that to rendered audio. And that's not what I want. I want to have all of my independent channels when it's rendered down. So just leave that ticked. And as soon as that's done, you're gonna see how I'm getting back not one, but actually eight tracks of audio. And of course, I can also retransform those to an instrument track at any time. So it's completely total recall at any point. Finally, you can also do this with external instruments in version 5.2. And when you restore back from the audio track, it's even gonna remember the bank and preset of your external instrument, meaning that it's kind of total recall for all of your external instrument presets as well. And yeah, I absolutely love it. Let me show you this in action. So you might already know how easy it is to add an external instrument in Studio One. You can literally just drag it here from your external instruments browser after it's set up. And if you want to know how to set it up, I'm going to link that in the video description as well. And just drag that into the next available song space. Once you've done that, you can start playing that external instrument right away. Even though I was playing this on my Atom SQ right now, I was actually playing it here on my OB6 synthesizer. Subtle flex. And likewise, I was just starting to sequence my Pro 2 here. I also have full control over the selected preset without having to stand up. Maybe also to show you that it's the real unit. Let me just turn some knobs on it. So as you can see, that's the real unit. And let's say that I want to commit to that now, make that rendered audio so that I can free up the Pro 2 to play other presets for me. But I still want to have access to the used preset, to all the MIDI data and so forth, just like I'm used to with instrument tracks. Well, that's super easy to do. Once again, the exact same process, just right click, transform to audio track. Then you find the exact same options presented here that you already know with instruments that are virtual. And as soon as I hit okay, the only change is that this has to happen in real time now, because this is a real instrument that needs to be recorded in real time, whereas virtual instruments can just be processed offline. And here you can see now the recording has finished, and this is just exactly my external instrument. 
but now it's rendered audio, so I could just turn off the unit if I want. And uh, it still keeps playing. But whenever I want to go back, I can just do that, transform back to an instrument track. It's going to remember the program and bank number. I could just flip on the Pro 2 again and it would play exactly what it played before. And also I have the option to, you know, if that was still uh, rendered audio, I can still extract the MIDI data onto a new instrument track just like that. So as you can see, Transform is super flexible. It works on instrument tracks, on audio tracks, and even on external instruments. It's one of the most powerful features of Studio One, also because it considers multi-out routings of virtual instruments, and I can't encourage you enough to try it out.